The number one question I get asked all the time is, is San Cristobal de las Casas safe? So I wanted to share my experience living here. If you're new to me, hi, my name is Karen. And even though I'm a full-time traveler, I've been living in San Cristobal de las Casas for the past two years. Good morning, sunshine. I feel like you can tell a lot about a city just by walking around and looking how they live, how quiet or not quiet the streets are, the people that you bump into as you walk. I'm always saying good morning to everybody that I see, in Spanish, of course. The kind of houses that they have. Almost all houses in Central have gates. Some have cameras. People will usually put away their car at night. Gates like these are usually garages. And sometimes the garages will be part of the house, but the point is that there's always an opening for a car. And my particular barrio has a neighborhood watch. But most of the places I've visited in Mexico have similar construction with gates and cameras and such. So why do I keep getting asked this question? Because there's a few things that make San Cristóbal de las Casas different. Like being located in the free and sovereign state of Chiapas, whose sovereignty is still protected by the Zapatista movement that in the 90s stood up for the freedom of the indigenous people. Something that is a big part of local culture here. And the fact that some areas are autonomous. There are a lot of indigenous communities that have their own laws and their own rules. And you'll see signs on the roads that warn you that it's an autonomous area. But there's also barrios that the cops will just not go into. So if something's happening in the north. It's unclear what the north is, but I would say anything above Walmart, the main market, or Guadalupe. They'll usually wait until the locals hash it out before acting. I don't know a lot about the Zapatistas or politics, so I thought I'd just share with you what it's like for me to live here and how safe I feel. Because every time I get into a taxi, they always talk about how safe it used to be. Not being from here, I can't neither speak from their experience or tell you what it was like before. What I can do is compare it to all the other places I lived in. And compared to all those other places, I have to say that this is the safest I have felt anywhere that I have lived. The heaviest police presence is near the Zocalo or Plaza de la Paz. You'll also see a lot of police on the Anadors, walking around, or driving around Centro in general. I have also come across a military presence in Centro and by Walmart on special situations when something seems to be brewing or there's a big protest. I walk everywhere and there hasn't been anywhere that I feel unsafe walking to, even El Norte, which is the area that everybody warns you about. I do walk with my purse forward, but I do that everywhere. Especially in large crowds, just to avoid pickpocketing. When I went to Guadalajara, I was told not to walk around with my phone in my hand. And here, I always walk around with a phone in my hand. In fact, I have never heard of somebody getting their phone stolen in this manner anyways. Um, I've heard of a couple of stories of tourists having it on the table, on the under doors, and somebody taking it, passports, wallets, things like that. So I would be cautious with that. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank Sean for today's coffee. Am I saying that right? I so appreciate it. And I hope my content is useful for you guys if you ever decide to travel to any of the places I've been to. So in a restaurant like this, I may not act any different. Like I have my purse on my table because that's where it feels comfortable. I might not keep it behind my chair if it's a very crowded area. And I might not keep my phone on the table if it's a very crowded area. But I wouldn't do that anywhere. It's just part of being cautious. The other thing you're always warned about is a gang that rides motorcycles here. It's not a motorcycle gang. It just happens to be their mode of transportation. So they call them motonetos. Usually when something happens, when there's a shootout or some sort of dispute, it has something to do with them. For me, Personally, it's rare for them to come into Centro or be around any area that I usually frequent. I did have a friend that lived really close to the incident that just happened in April, if you don't know. This April, they assassinated the leader of the main market here. This created a situation in which two rival cities or barrios or people started shooting at each other on the street. Now, I lived close enough to hear it, so if 
was apparent to me, but at no point did I feel in danger, per se. Most of the city or this area is closed to the shootout, just closed for the day. And then next day was business as usual, except there was military presence in the Zocalo and there was a helicopter roaming around from early morning. So we avoided the area, we stayed home an extra day, we adjusted accordingly, but just as a precaution, not necessarily because I didn't feel safe. My personal opinion and just my opinion is that these things are really well contained amongst them. It's just the people that are fighting that are usually involved in the situation and everybody just stays out of the way. In my experience, crime in other areas that I lived in have been much more intrusive. Like my home has been broken into a bunch of times. Um, I got in, jumped on the street. My little sister got held at gunpoint because they wanted to steal her car. Our cars have gotten stolen like three times. I've had three different cars stolen. <laughs> But none of this was here. This was in the US and I did experience some things in Venezuela, but the most things I have experienced that are negative and dangerous and that had me nervous have been in the United States. Now it's for nighttime, I take a cab home because my neighborhood gets really, really empty at night. It's not out of fear per se, but just in case. <laughs> Precaution, out of precaution. And I have noticed that in Centro, which is where most of the nightclubs and bars are, there'll be a heavier presence. There's usually like a pickup with armed guards on it roaming around, passing you by several times throughout the night. The times I have stayed out past midnight, I have noticed that there'll be a lot of drunk men on the streets, but usually they're drunk beyond the point of being able to do anything per se. But like I said, I avoid walking home. So therefore I don't see that often. Something I wanted to address. Sorry, it's raining. <laughs> Something I wanted to address that I mentioned earlier was about El Norte, which is the Northern part of the city and why everybody tells you not to go there or live there, or just casually walk there. The logistical answer is because that's where most of the problems happen and there's lack of police presence. The police just won't go there. So if something happens to you and you call the cops, chances are they will not go. Having said that, the barrio I live in has a community that protects themselves and takes care of one another have a higher chance of being in the middle of a shootout or any kind of fight or debate. Now aside from what happened in April, I really have not experienced anybody getting killed over the conflict. Usually there'll be a demonstration and there'll be people walking around with guns and sticks and things like that, but it's rare to hear that somebody actually gets killed. Okay, I'm getting pretty soaked. So I'm gonna end it there, but just know, I feel safe. I feel safer than in a lot of places. I feel okay walking home, something I don't feel back home in Miami. And there isn't a civil war, like the news say. Thank you for watching, love you, bye.